What's going on guys, it's Till here from Demsec and today we're going to be covering some basic SQL injection. So to start off, if you don't know how to set up a virtual machine from a live CD, check the video in the bottom right hand corner of this screen, it's an annotation, you can click on it, but the link will be in the description for those who are watching on mobile devices. And that's going to show you how to set up this VM that I have done right here. If you don't need help with that, the link to the ISO is down in the description, you can go ahead and install that anywhere you want. So right now I've got this IP address and if I actually open up this browser here, it's the same IP address and today we're going to be using DVWA, Damn Vulnerable Web Application. It's an intentionally vulnerable web application which allows us to try out some of our SQL injection techniques and actually move on to some other stuff like XSS, CSRF, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, so to get started, you don't actually perform your hacking here, you actually just log in here. So the Password, uh, the username is admin and the password is password so what I'm going to want you guys to do just to start off with is go down to this tab and set this to learn hit submit that way we can just start off with the basic stuff and work on to the more difficult stuff so we're going to be covering normal SQL injection so there's a num number of ways that you can actually inject into a page and actually helpfully DVWA allows us to view the source but we don't actually need that right now so the best way for me, anyway, to identify something that which may be, may be vulnerable is to put a single quotation mark in this box and hit submit. As you can see, we actually get a MySQL error, which to anyone else would just seem like it's an error. I need to put something else in there. But this actually means that we could actually be able to exploit this. So the first piece of SQL injection that I'm going to show you is probably the easiest thing, and it's a very quick way to understand whether you can easily inject into something. So you leave that single quotation mark there and do all one equals one and I like to put a hash at the end of that because that actually quotes out the rest of the query so if there's something after that which may mitigate this this stops it. So if I hit submit I actually get the entire database here so if I just show you what the it would have done before I mean there could be hundreds of users in here and that would have been us until so say if we just want to steal the user information nice and slowly like that that's what we can do but if we do like I said all one equals one and put the hash on the end of it we get the entire database so that's interesting um, if there were some passwords or something in here if they weren't hashed or salted or anything like that we would be able to see passwords and then we'd have a free password to the website in this case we don't so we're gonna start exploring so let's just go back to what we had in here. So that's what our command stands at at the moment. We don't just want this kind of information. What we're going to try is to get some other information. So let's try and find out the database name. So let's just, uh, this isn't going to work, but let's just see if we can do normal SQL in here and see if we get any kind of errors. So there's an error here, and that's because it's basically trying to do two queries at once. Thankfully, we have union for that. So if we actually say that, the select statements have a different number of columns. And this is an intentional error I've made. So we've got to work out how to either concatenate those or disregard the previous ones and just put this information in. Personally, I don't really care about this information, so what I'm going to do is trash this and just get the information I'm looking for. So union select union all select null and then database and as you can see here in the surname field we get dvwa which is, is actually the name of the database and we can actually confirm this by going to the source and we should be able to okay we don't actually have the mysql connection in here but if it was in there we'd be able to tell so what else can we get from here so let's just carry on with the statement we're working on So that's what we've got so far. So what other inf information can we get? So if we replace with this with at, at version and hit submit, we can get the version of MySQL that's running. And um, we can also see which user we're running as, which can be interesting if we want to do other stuff. User, put that hash there. So we're actually running as root. So if we went and injected something into this, we could run it as root easily. So because we're running as root, that means we actually have root access to the entire system, including the files on that system. So let's try and load a few well-known files within Linux. 
But let's go back to that command we were using. So now we're ready to actually inject our own code. And what we're going to be using is the load underscore file function. So inside here, we select the file that we want to load. So I'm going to go for x et password, hit submit, and now we can get the password file from the system. One more command I'm going to show you, and I'm going off script here, so let's hope this works. I'm going to try and select all of the users. User from mysql.user. And because we're root, we should actually be able to run this. So we've got root, PMA, and root as all of the users in the database. From these basic commands, we can get start getting really useful information from this database. As you can see, this is a user's database. Usually, the user's database would contain password hashes, all that kind of cool stuff. And if that was here, we'd have passwords, and we'd pretty much have already owned the site because we could do whatever we wanted. So in the next episode, we're going to go more in-depth into SQL injection and also start work working with some cool tools which can automate the process and make it a lot easier on us. Hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.